And what kind of uh, an impact has Dominic Raab's um, alleged bullying had on civil servants in his department? Well, I think it's important that we don't go into details of the allegations. They are being investigated and confiden confidentiality is critical. You that I'm asking you about the impact. Uh, the, um, I, I've spoken to people who are civil servants uh, working uh, and have worked for Dominic Raab who have suffered mental health crisis, have um, uh, uh, lost uh, their careers, essentially, because they've had to, to move and, and, and change jobs. Bullying has an enormous impact on individuals. It's about an abuse of power. And the, in many cases, there's no greater power dynamic than someone who is a government minister or a deputy prime minister and a civil servant. And where that gets abused, it can have significant consequences for individuals. How many people are we talking about? Uh, I don't know exactly. There are eight complaints, of which we understand, I think, a couple of dozen civil servants are involved in it. It covers three different government departments. It covers a period of about four years. And in any other employment context, if that was you, me, or anyone else in the workplace up and down the country, the employer would consider suspending someone because with allegations so significant, you have to have regard for your current employees and whether essentially you're putting them in harm's way if potentially someone who is a, could be a prolific bully is still allowed to be in the workplace. And that's what the Prime Minister should okay. address and address. Uh, lots to talk about there. Let me unpack it, if I may. So you say at least eight allegations co uh, covering a couple of dozen um, civil servants. Um, what has been the outcome for some of those civil servants? You say they've lost their careers. Yeah, they've, they've moved. If, if you're in a workplace where you're being bullied, where you're, the daily grind of coming to work destroys your mental health, then that has an impact on your career. But, you know, these, these jobs, working with ministers, in many ways are the pinnacle of a civil servant's career. It's at the top of the civil service, doing some of the most important jobs in the civil service. And to leave that as part of your career or be forced out because you can't cope with it, it's hugely damaging to your career and, okay. and your life. Well, let me put this to you. Uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg was sat where you are yeah. a couple of days ago and this is what he had to say. Is it reasonable to demand from senior and well-paid professionals a level of good service? And then you have to judge whether that line has been overstepped. But I, I do worry that we are getting a bit snowflakey about this. A bit snowflakey? I, I was astonished by those comments. Jacob Rees-Mogg was leader of the House of Commons. I know that he met with people who were the victims of bullying in the Commons. He's heard firsthand what it's like to be on the wrong end of bullying. And to talk about snowflakery uh, in those terms is just astonishing from someone in his position. This, this sort of behaviour destroys lives. I mean, it's not just about careers. People's lives and their mental health are at risk when they're subject to systematic bullying. And to belittle it in that way is absolutely outrageous from a former leader of the House and Cabinet Minister. Well, let me put this to you from the Education Secretary, Gillian Keegan. I think actually it was Dom himself who instigated this uh, investigation. Um, so that's ongoing. I sit around the cabinet table and, you know, don't see, don't see that, right? I don't see any, you know, I feel very comfortable with my colleagues around the ca cabinet table. Doesn't see any bullying, is what she's well, saying. Bullying is about the abuse of power. So the power dynamic between the Secretary of State for Education and the Deputy Prime Minister is very different from the power dynamic between a minister and a civil servant. So. Ministers should know that. When they talk about they haven't witnessed it, they wouldn't witness it because they are in a different position from a civil servant or someone who can be bullied by someone as powerful as a Deputy Prime Minister. Why should he be suspended? Because you or I or anyone else would be if we were in that situation. Why should government ministers be any different? If any employer faces significant allegations against someone, they have to look at their current employees. And if you're faced with eight separate allegations from three different parts of your organisation over a period of four years involving dozens of people, that suggests there is a real issue there and a real danger um, uh, uh, for the health and safety of current staff until you can establish guilt or innocence. You have to protect your current workforce. Well, we spoke to Number 10 about this this morning and they said that there's a long-standing principle that ministers should continue to carry out their duties while an investigation is ongoing. The, the Prime Minister is also Minister for the Civil Service. He has an obligation to civil servants. If it concludes at the end of this investigation that it's correct, that Dominic Raab is a bully, that all of those allegations are correct, what it means is, in the meantime, he has been allowed, potentially, to bully civil servants 
um, whilst he's uh, the, the Secretary of State. That is the issue that the Prime Minister needs to contend with. He wants this power. He has decided he will not allow an independent system to deal with complaints, and with that power comes responsibility, including protecting current civil servants. Friends of Dominic Raab, uh, who work within government, including two senior civil servants, saying that this is a clear attempt by politically motivated mandarins to get him. That's extraordinary, and it couldn't be further from the truth. In actual fact, I've spoken to people who didn't raise concerns at the time because they understood the political impact of it. They were reticent about challenging behaviour because they understood at that point in time it would be seen as a politically motivated attack. Civil servants are politically impartial. They want to serve the government of the day and do the best job, but they have to be protected and work in an environment where they are not bullied for doing that. And to suggest that they are actually have got some political motivation, I'll be really saying two dozen civil servants in three different government departments over a period of four years have got together with some massive conspiracy. That just doesn't uh, sound credible. Why have they waited years to come forward? because it's really difficult to raise complaints. Again, I've spoken to some of the people involved in this and they said they look at what happened with Priti Patel. The Prime Minister was forced into an investigation. He sat on that report for six months and when he was forced to actually conclude on it, he ignored the recommendations that she had bullied civil servants and breached the ministerial code. So they got a clear message. The only way you can complain about a minister is to go through the Prime Minister, and that Prime Minister was not interested in allegations against his political allies. When do you think he knew? When do you think this Prime Minister knew about allegations against his well, party? Well, the, the reports are that he was briefed, and if you look at what he says, he's, he's telling us what he doesn't know. He hasn't telling us what he does know. I think the Prime Minister needs to come clean. It would be normal practice that when a Prime Minister is appointing Cabinet Ministers, he would be told of any concerns. Whether that was a formal complaint or not, he may well have been aware that there were concerns about Dominic's rab behaviour. May well, that's, you don't think... You... Well, well, we don't know, because he won't answer the question. He re point-blankly refuses to say whether he was told about informal complaints about uh, Dominic Rabb. And if he was, what did he do with that? Did he decide that wasn't important? If th those concerns were raised about his behaviour, that really didn't matter. What was more important was giving a job to a political ally. We need to know, and the reason why we need to know is because the Prime Minister has to decide on this investigation. The case he involved doesn't decide on it, he only establishes a fact. So the Prime Minister is the one who, in, at the Let end of the day, has to, to make the a determination. We've just had this from uh, the PM's press secretary. So let me put this to you and, and see what you say in the result. The PM was not aware of any formal complaints at the time of appointing Dominic Raab. Yes, that's what he keeps saying. He keeps relying... Do you dispute that? No, because there were no formal complaints, because the only way you can make a formal complaint is for the Prime Minister of the day to agree that there would be an investigation. He's not being asked whether there were formal complaints. He's asked about whether he was aware of any informal concerns Concerns about Dominic Raab, and once again, he is refusing to answer that point. Let me ask you one final question, if I may. Um, we had Labour on the programme yesterday. They said that he needs to be suspended as a matter of urgency because there are concerns about uh, not, all, not only the welfare, but also the safety of those people in his department. Is that going too far? It's not going too far. That's what would happen to anyone else in this country. Why should government ministers be exempt from what would be the rules that apply to everyone else. Faced with significant allegations of bullying, it would be normal practice to suspend someone until such times have you been able to establish the, 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 whether they are valid or not. That's what should happen in this case.